In today's video, we are going to talk about the energy balance of the body and how this relates to an animal's body condition. To help us understand this concept, we are going to compare energy balance to paying a bill. The units of energy we will use are kilocals or kcals. Kcals are the common unit used to measure energy requirements of a dog or cat's body as well as the energy content of their food. One of the first things we'll look at is how energy balance works. In doing this, we will look at the three ways the body can relate to energy. The first is its requirement of energy. The body needs energy to maintain body systems and perform many necessary functions. This is what we will call the energy bill. There are many things that affect the amount of energy the body needs and what ends up on the bill. The major amount of energy on this bill is used just to maintain the body's basic function. It is used to run things like your dog and cat's brain, heart, and lungs. It is important to note that this energy requirement can vary by up to 50% between individual dogs or cats of the same size based on their metabolism. So even if you have two golden retrievers of the same size from the same parents, they may require a different amount of energy, which means different amounts of food. The other main use of energy you will see on the animal's bill is exercise. Exercise can play a big factor because in order for muscles to move, they need energy. Many other parts of the body also use more energy during exercise, such as your heart, lungs, and cells. So this can be a big line item on your energy bill. The next aspect we will look at is how the animal's body will pay its new bill or meet these energy requirements. It will do this by consuming food, which the body generates into energy. There are three sources of food in which a dog or cat can pay for its energy bill. We'll call these currencies. The first currency is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are a lot like cash because they can be exchanged for energy very easily. The next currency would be fat. Paying energy bills with fat is like using a credit card. It is still very quick and only takes an additional step for the body to use it and pay its energy bill. A credit card, compared to a cash bill, will also have more money on it. And fats, which are credit cards, have higher concentration of kcals per unit compared to carbohydrates or protein. The other energy currency our body uses is protein. Now think of protein like a check. It is equal to cash or carbohydrates on a kill count basis, they are still worth the same amount. But a check actually takes more work to pay with because you have to write it out, it has to be delivered and cleared by the banks. This is similar to how protein works to pay an energy bill in the body. To get energy from protein, you actually use energy. Now, the last aspect we will look at in balancing a body's energy is the currency we have in savings. This is where the extra calories have been stored because we were taking in more currency than we needed to pay our bills. And if one day we don't bring in enough energy currency, we can still pay our bills with what we have in savings. The first thing that we have in our savings account is glycogen. Glycogen is a glucose that has been saved in the liver and is a very fast and easy source of energy. Our bodies store about a day's worth of glucose in the liver as a failsafe for the brain. If something happened and we were starved for a day, we would have enough sugar in our liver to keep our brain functioning and working, which would ensure our body's basic life functions would continue to work and keep us alive. The next thing we use as a savings account is fat. Fat cells are our main store of energy for our body. Last but not least, we can also pay our energy bill by dipping into our savings in the muscle. So we can use enzymes to break down muscle into the amino acids, which make up the protein, and use them to pay our energy bill. So let's run through an example to see how energy balance works. Let's say we have a 55 pound dog who has a body condition score of four, and we want to get them down to a three. So as is, let's look at how their energy would balance. First, let's look at what they have in their savings, since this is where the extra energy is stored that is giving them a body condition score of four. So let's say they have a total of $10,000 or units of energy in their savings. You can see that they are saving a lot of these extra calories as fat. Eventually, it will be our aim to reduce this number in order to get the body condition score to a three. Now let's take a look at their energy bill. They are fairly inactive, so they only need about 600 kilocals per day to function. Looking at the currency they have to pay that bill, they have exactly the same amount, 600 kilocals. This means they are consuming 600 kilocals per day in their food. 
Now because these two numbers are the same, the amount of energy they put out and the amount of energy they bring in, they won't need to tap into their deposits or savings at all. This means that if we continue to exercise and feed them the same amount, they will maintain these extra calories that are being saved as fat. So let's see how we can reduce our savings of energy to get the dog to a body condition score of 3. The first thing to adjust is usually the amount of energy the animal is bringing in through their diet. Many dog and cat owners with overconditioned animals will free feed. This makes the amount of kilocals they consume per day a huge mystery. If they do measure their food, even slight inaccurate measurements of food can add a large amount of kilocalories for these small animals, so it is very important to measure out their meals accurately in order to maintain a healthy weight. If the animal's food is being measured, we can then look at the composition of the food to see what changes can be made to assist in weight loss. An important currency to look at is protein. Remember, protein uses energy to make energy, so we want to increase the amount of protein we are feeding them. We also don't want our dogs or cats to lose the muscle that they have in their savings, so we want to keep these levels high. The next thing to look at is fat. Fat is more calorically dense than other nutrients, so if we decrease the amount of fat, we will drastically decrease the amount of calories. Weight loss formulas will usually have around 8 to 10 percent fat. You also want to take a look at carbohydrates, which are the fast cash. These turn to glucose quickly, so we will definitely want to decrease the amount we are feeding in the diet. There are no daily carbohydrate requirements for dogs and cats like there are for protein and fat, so let's just get them out of there. If you decrease the amount of energy currency that they are bringing in, they will have to pull money or energy from their savings. This will decrease the amount of fat that they have on their body. The next step to reduce an animal's body condition score would be to increase the amount of their bill. Really, the only way we can do this is to increase the energy requirements they need through exercise. To use more energy when exercising, we simply need to lengthen the duration of time we exercise our animals. So for dogs that is going for walks or having play session more frequently or for longer periods. And the easiest thing to do for cats is to start playing with them before each meal. This can be as simple as walking around with a wand toy while you're getting their food ready. So if we are successful in increasing the amount of our energy bill, again, we won't have enough currency in the form of food to pay it. So we will have to take money from our savings which will result in a reduction of the energy stored as fat on the body. By increasing the amount of energy the animal expends and reducing or even just measuring out the amount of calories coming in, we can start to slowly decrease this amount of saved energy. It may not seem like much, but we want them to lose weight slowly, and as long as we keep up with the increased exercise and reduced calorie intake, they will continue to lose weight until they have a healthy body condition score. Now, let's turn the tables and say this dog was a 2 on the body condition score chart. In this case, we would want to increase the amount of money we have in our savings. There is not a lot of opportunity to do this by changing our energy bill, so we want to look at how to bring in more money through energy currency. The easiest way to do this is to increase the fat the animal consumes. Fat, or energy credit cards, have the highest concentration of calories of all the currencies. Now, if we were already at a high fat level, or the dog has GI issues, maybe chronic pancreatitis, we would want to increase the amount of carbohydrates instead because they are most easily turned into energy. By increasing either the fat or carbohydrates, we would see an increase in the total energy currency coming into the body. This extra energy that we aren't using to pay our bill would then go into savings, helping increase this dog's body condition from a 2 to a 3. So in review, if we want to decrease a dog or cat's body condition score, we want to increase the amount of energy the animal is spending through exercise, and we want to limit or at least measure the amount of energy they are bringing in through the diet. These two steps will result in a decrease of energy stored as fat in the animal's savings. And then, if we want to increase an animal's body condition score, we want to increase the amount of energy or calories they bring in through their diet. This will add extra energy into their savings account and put more weight on their body.